Hey, welcome back. So today, like the video says, we're going to look at IMC. Um, this is really taking you from you've installed IMC, you're going to log in for the first time, and what do you need to do before you start discovering devices? Okay, so we're going to take you through configuring system settings. So these are some of the um, basic out-of-box settings that you might want to look at turning on before you uh, before you really start getting out and trying to administer your devices. Uh, we're going to show you how to change the administrator password. Make sure you do this absolutely before you discover devices. Otherwise, you're going to end up with the uh, administrative password of admin admin, which are the defaults, who have complete control over your network environment. Probably not a good thing to have. And last, we're going to configure the FTP server for backing up your config files. So here we are at uh, first time logging into your HP IMC. So username and password defaults of admin and admin. So as we log in here for the first time, we're going to get this pop-up message saying no devices are found. Um, click OK to go to the discovery page. So we're going to click OK and skip that. No discovery right now. Go directly into system, system configuration, and go to right here into the system settings. So we want to make sure uh, we're going to change some things from the default. Um, one of the first things I would do is change the operator idle timeout. That's You can leave it at, at 30 if you want. This is basically dependent on your policy. Um, I'm in here all day every day so I like to leave it open so my browser sessions are open. Um, in addition we've got the NNMI configuration so if you do have uh, NNMI in place there's some discovery settings and sharing of information so that's a, a nice little feature to have if you've got both of the HP products in. Um, interface up down alarm so we're just gonna click OK on that and change the alarm to filter for PC connected links. Okay so that's um, that's pretty important to make sure that you're not going to get filters and you know, you're going to filter out alarms and you're not going to get alarms on all your PCs and your user PCs when they go up and down. Okay. Um, the other thing here we've got the enable disman ping. This will make changes to your HP Comware devices so be aware of that but it will also significantly improve your discovery, your layer 2 topology discovery. So it's it's actually recommended to leave it turned on. Okay. Um, now that we have taken a look at that, let's go down to system configuration here again and look at the default monitoring indexes. So this will be when a device is discovered, what are we going to actually monitor out of the box? So you can see these are the uh, default settings. So we're going to take CPU, memory utilization, response time, so latency, how long does it take from IMC to ping and, and return back, um, and then the device unreachability, so how long has the device actually been down. Um, one of the other common ones that people will turn on is uh, interface receiving rate and interface bandwidth rate. So we're going to click that and turn those on here. And you can see there's a whole bunch of uh, other ones here. There's temperature monitor. Um, that may be interesting to you. Um, assuming that the devices in question actually have temperature monitors. Um, maybe we want the uh, spanning tree instability, so um, the spanning tree topology changes, how many times per second, right? We've got a whole bunch of other ones on here. This is definitely one of those cases though that just because you can do it doesn't mean you should. Try to be a little choosy. Pick what you actually want to turn on. So we're going to click Save. Um, we're going to go to the monitor options and take a look so you guys can understand how we're going to going to actually monitor this. We don't want to do performance trending and do the bandwidth up and down on every interface. We only want to do the up interfaces. And as well, in addition to that, we're going to filter out by interfaces connected to SNMP or servers. So this will basically mean any trunk links and any server links um, by default. Display options, again, data units, um, do we want to do it automatically or set to bits, bytes, gigabytes, all that kind of stuff. We have options there. So now that we've covered that off, um, let's go over and take a look at the configuration options. So to get there, we're going to go Service Configuration Center and go down to Options. So now that we're in the Options, we're going to click on Backup Policy. So in Backup Policy, we're going to have a few different settings that we can look at and configure here. Um, the Alarm Generation Mode. We could have max backup configuration, history days, how many files do you want to back up. So if you've got governance around how many backup files you need to have, you might want to look at this. Um, as well, we can say, do we generate alarms if the configuration to be backed up is different from the baseline? Um, only the selected devices will generate the alarms. You can kind of leave that alone. Um, 
And the second one, do we want to um, generate an alarm if the configuration backed up is different from the last backup? So probably a good one to turn on. That'll at least give you some kind of a real-time um, backup notification if there has been a change. So upon discovering a device with IMC, one of the things that's going to happen is you're suddenly going to have power to do a lot of things on that devices. So what you really want to do is to go in and change the default administrator password as early as possible. So this could even be your first task out of the box. So we're going to go into system operators and click on the admin account, click on the change button, the icon over there on the right, and then we're going to go in and change the password. If you do have Radius or LDAP set up, we could look at those as future options, but right now we want to make sure we, we lock down your management station so that when you do start managing devices, you don't have anybody who can get in here and start changing those um, devices, rebooting them, changing configurations, all those bad things that uh, you don't want unknown people doing. You only want known and trusted individuals like you, the NMS owner, doing. So I'm going to click OK here. There we go. Operator admin successfully modified. And um, as we move forward, we're going to look at more operator group functionality, um, how to leverage that, maybe look at some strategies around creating different operators. So we'll get to that in future videos. So the last thing we want to do here is configure the FTP server. So again, we're going to go down to Configuration Center and go to, down to Options. Um, by default, IMC only ships with a TFTP server, not an FTP server. So we're pretty, ex pretty explicit about that. And right here in the interface, please install third-party FTP server software and set server temp under the IMC installation directory as the root directory of the FTP service. So uh, it's not going to be there. Okay, let's go over here. Um, I have pre-installed the FileZilla software package, which is a freeware um, open source FTP package. If you're using your another FTP package, feel uh, free to check your documentation. Um, for FileZilla, we're going to go into the user interface here, add a user called IMC FTP. Um, it's not part of a group. We're going to click on the password button, put in our trusty super secret password, and we can make other changes here if you want. Again, description, best practice. Always put a description in so that somebody else who's coming in uh, later, if they have to try to troubleshoot this and figure it out, they'll know what this account was for. So we're going to go and click on the shared folders. So again, in that program files, IMC, go down into server, go into the temp, and that is the server slash temp directory that we are talking about before. Um, we can, need to at least have create permissions here. Um, you can give them as much as you want or as little as you want. Uh, perhaps what we should do, you know, if you have security policies in place, maybe you don't want this account being able to delete, that's okay too, should still work fine. Click on the OK button. Done. Sending the account. Settings, okay, we're good. Now we're going to go back over to the IMC and enable the FTP transfer mode, put in the IMC username. And again, we'll just double check here to make sure these do have to match. So IMC FTP, there we go. And of course, the, uh, the password is going to have to match as well. And then we click OK. And now you have successfully enabled FTP. Um, so that is the out-of-box settings that we, we pretty much want to do. You do have S, SFTP and SCP as options as well. We'll get to those later. See you guys next time on the next IMC tutorial.